Have you ever wondered, what was the first prime dual secondary in the game? The answer would be the Ag Bronco. Hey guys, hello and welcome back. As always, my name is Lazar, and today we're gonna be diving deeper into the Ag Bronco Prime, a Mass 3 rank 10 dual secondary weapon. That being said, please keep in mind that my builds and guides usually follow a more new player friendly approach. Simply because there's a lot of info here and I want anybody watching this video to understand how the weapon functions and how it should be built. So if you're a veteran of the game and already know most of the basics, then please have a little patience. And with that out of the way, let's jump into the Ag Bronco Prime. First of all, let's check out how the weapon handles without any sorts of mods equipped. And I'm gonna be taking roughly 30 meters away from the wall and put a couple of shots in. And look at the spread on this thing. This is absolutely bloody hilarious. The accuracy on the Ag Bronco Prime is only 3.7, which means that the spread is simply all over the place. In order to get the maximum amount of damage you can, you're gonna have to be really close and personal with your targets. And by default, the Ag Bronco Prime fires 7 pellets at a target. Target. Let's jump into stats and see precisely what we're dealing with. We got a mod capacity of 60 out of 60 and if your Ag Bronco Prime only has 30 out of 30 then jump into actions and plug in an Orokin Catalyst. The Orokin Catalyst can be obtained from alerts and evasions especially after dev streams or you can also get it from the daily sortie or you can also pay 20 plat for it. My weapon has been formatted a total of two times but for the weapon build I'm recommending you guys one should be enough, two if you have a Riven. Like I said earlier, accuracy is only 3.7. Now this is Euphona Prime territory when it comes to that huge spread. Of course, I'm talking about the Altfire. Critical chance is abysmal at 6%. The multiplier is quite nice at 2.0, but with the crit chance being this low, going further into crit with the Ag Bronco, even if you do have a Riven, even with Prime Pistol Gambit, I mean, look at this. 17.2 with a Prime Pistol Gambit fully maxed out. It's simply not worth. Fall off is pretty bad as well, between 9 and 18 meters. Basically, this weapon wants to be used up close and personal. Fire rate 4.33, a magazine of 8, double of course from the normal Bronco Prime. Noise alarming because they are shotguns, reload 2.3. Now, this is where the weapon suffers, one of the points that is. 2.3 reload with 8 magazine size. Mm. That will make for some uh, very long downtime, but we're gonna address it a bit later. Riven disposition, however, is 4 out of 5. Ag Bronco Prime apparently is not very popular, and the Ag Bronco in general, of course. Status chance is sky high at 30%, which means we will be able to get this weapon to a true 100% status chance with the 4 6 60, 60 mods. More on that later. The IPS maximum is impact 280. Now that is a lot of impact. Puncture and slash have the same value at 35 and the impact is probably the biggest curse currently on this weapon. At the current time in Warframe, impact is kinda recognized to be the worst out of the physical damage types. It's good against shields and corpus and... but does anybody really care? In any case, let's start slapping on some mods and the first thing we should always do is slap on some damage with Hornet Strike and that's gonna be 220% extra damage. Then multi-shot of course is mandatory on mostly everything, so we're gonna slap on Barrel Diffusion together with Lethal Torrent. We're gonna be getting Barrel Diffusion 120% and Lethal Torrent gives us 60. Now the fire rate isn't really that big of a deal. Yes, you do get a bit of burst, but consistently bumping into that reload time will mean even more downtime. And as you saw, the Ag Bronco Prime has quite the recoil on it. Very similar actually to the Ag Lex Prime. I think just a little bit lower, but I might be wrong since the stats page don't want to tell me the amount of recoil it has. In any case, we slapped on a whole bunch of multi-shot. Next, we gotta talk a bit about how status chance works, especially for pellet-based weapons. Essentially, your status chance gets divided among your pellets. So, for example, now I'm firing 26 pellets and I have a 100% status chance with multi-shot effects. My status chance will get divided among the pellets. So, actually, per pellet, you will have a very low status chance. That is why you need a 100% status chance without multi-shot effects. Then, and only then, all of your pellets are guaranteed to apply a status effect. So, let's get rid of multi-shot for the time being so it doesn't trick us on our status percentage and let's slap on true status chance effects such as Jolt, Scorch, Pistol Pestilence and Frostbite. These are the 4 60, 60 mods and in order to get the most out of the Ag Bronco Prime you will need all of them. Frostbite, Pistol Pestilence and Scorch are easy to farm 
Scorch and Frostbite from Spy Missions, ideally Pistol Pestilence you can get this one from Corrupted War in the Void and Jolt unfortunately only from Battle Kit here, the Void Trader or the Trade Chat, unfortunately this is the only one that is kinda pricey. Currently on PC going between 40 and 50 plat, just keep an eye out for Barrow when he brings it, get multiple of these puppies so you can sell some of them later on for a nice profit. In any case, with the 460-60 mods, we managed to reach a 100% true status chance. So now we can go back and add our multi-shot because we know we're not gonna get tricked by its values. So little torrent and barrel diffusion in you go and stay like this. Next, let's talk about how elementals get combined on a weapon. As you saw there, I added four elemental times and I have viral and radiation. The elementals will always get combined 2x2 two two, and the priority for the combination will always be from top left to bottom right. So the first two get combined, then the second two. Depending on how you move these around, you can um, manipulate what kind of effects you're gonna be doing to your target. What kind of elemental damage do you have? For example, since I moved Scorch to be first and now it combines with uh, Cold, I'm gonna be getting Blast and Corrosive. Now it is important to know that each faction has different resistances and vulnerabilities to different types of damage. For example, Blast deals less damage against heavily armored targets, but Corrosive has a 75 bonus against Ferrite armor. If I move them one more time around, let's see, what about this? Now I got Viral and Radiation. Now Viral is an outstanding elemental combination. If there is an elemental combination that will grant you at least decent results in most situations, that would be Viral. Now Radiation is good against Alloy Armor. Alloy Armor can be found on Grenier units, they're more lighter units. And also uh, Radiation is good versus Eidolons, but please, for the love of God, don't take the Bronco versus Eidolons. In any case, first we're gonna be going for a Viral Radiation setup. And again, manipulate these four around, move them around to get the combinations you desire. Now I'm guessing a lot of you already thought of, hey, maybe I can use this as a Tigris Prime, build Viral to get a wood radiation and of course get some nice slashes out of the weapon. Is that viable? Well, I believe in showing, not just Fury, so let's show it. First, however, we're gonna slap on one additional mod in the form of MAME. This will give us 120% slash, which brings my slash higher than the puncture. Keep in mind that IPS, uh, impact, puncture and slash, has a four times chance of proccing over elemental types. So the actual impact is not 2.5, think of it uh, at, in terms of status chance as a 10,000. This one you can think it as a 1.2k and this one you can think it as a 2.8k. So actually the order is like this in this case. Impact, Viral and Radiation, and then Slash. So you see, my Slash doesn't have that high of a chance at proccing. But in any case, let's give it a go. Maybe it's good. However, I'm gonna be picking up Voban because I don't want Impact procs and Blast procs all over the place. And this is Edgelord Voban. I hope you enjoy. Very well, we're gonna be spawning in Corrupted Heavy Gunner level 120. And keep in mind that Corrupted units have more health and armor than regular units. Put them up into the air using Voban's free ability. Okay, I managed to knock them down. And we're gonna go for a couple of headshots. Get up, get, get up, there we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's a full clip. Now that is definitely a full clip. Let's see what kind of results we get. As you will see, the viral will slip off the target before is it is even close to dying. The slashes won't do that much. Let's empty two clips in this guy. Come on, die, god damn you. Not a chance, not a chance in hell simply because there is not enough slash on the target. In order to make this weapon, into a Tigris Prime wannabe, then you're gonna need a very specific ribbon, and I'm gonna discuss with you what kind of ribbon you will need a bit later. But for now, I hope it's clear that you can't really make this weapon into a slasher. Well, if I can't slash, then what can I do? In the case of Grenier and Corrosive versus Ferrite, the smartest idea will always be to build uh, corrosive damage like we did earlier. So Pistol Pestilence and Jolt up first. We're gonna get rid of MAME since we don't need it anymore. And now we got Corrosive and Blast. Now this is not an ideal combination because well yes Corrosive is great against Ferrite but Blast deals less damage. Unfortunately I cannot touch the 460-60 mods. I can't remove any of them. The last mod slot, well this is a bit of an option slot. Something like Seeker will not be a bad idea. Punch through, yes, so you can hit multiple targets. But considering the spread, if you're not really close to your targets, Indian file style, most of, uh, well, some of your pellets will be landing in walls. Here's another good idea. 
we can take care of that pesky reload of 2.3 which makes for a lot of downtime and stunning speed would get you there. Now the advantage to stunning speed is that it gives you 10% status chance and if you guys manage to get a Riven with some status chance on it, stunning speed might give you that extra little bit you need to get the full 100% so you can drop one or two uh, 60, 60 mods and then finally you're not forced into double elemental combinations, you can get rid of that stupid blast. That is an example. Here's another good example, magazine size. I know that most of the time I say mag clip, sorry about that. Ice storm, 40% magazine capacity and 40% cold. This is also a good idea. By all intents and purposes, please cater the weapons you play around your own preference and what you like, especially when it comes to the final mod slot. But that being said, if you want the absolute max amount of damage and the, well, quote unquote, best uh, solution you will be going for a bit more corrosive with convulsion or pathogen rounds now basically what i did here is pumped up my corrosive over the stupid blast so it has a better chance at proccing now i know i give blast a lot of well crap but that's because it's simply annoying and there are certain situations where, where blast will become very useful take it into one hour two hours into a defense or a survival and you will be glad you have that extra crowd control and the impact as well in any case this is the build i'm recommending to you guys so let's test it out and see if it has some punch before we could barely touch those targets i'm not even gonna re-simulate we're gonna keep the same ones up you go now these guys are 50 percent too free a build such as this is going to be able to kill one of these targets from full to nothing around five shots one two three four five there you go five shots as you can see it's a lot better than trying to go for slash and i would love to build this weapon for slash test it a little bit but without a very very specific ribbon i cannot do that and to be honest i don't even know what a specific ribbon it would if it would really be worth it or not but a ribbon such as that will cost you an arm and a leg one two three four five absolutely beautiful basically what you're doing is playing into armor strip are you curious about the max rate of fire okay let's reload uh let this guy come down calm down okay let's go this will be like realistic right maximum rate of fire through the use of a macro so i am not limited by my own well ability to click the button a thousand times really really fast and this is maximum rate of fire. As you saw, I absolutely murdered the target and his health bar went red. That is because I did a lot more shots on him, body shots, because as you can see, it climbs up a lot. So it's pretty difficult to control a recoil such as this. And with all the multi-shot we uh, lapped on the weapon, you will see that the spread is absolutely horrendous. There's another mod I want to point out for you guys. Maybe you haven't heard of it because until yesterday I didn't even know it existed. It's an accuracy mod. Targeting subsystems. Check this one out. On hit, 30% accuracy while aiming for 9 seconds. Now, this will be of course just like uh, the final mod slot is. Preference based. But I do want to show it to you guys. I paid 5 plat for it from Warframe Market. I believe it's around 5 to 10 plat. So it's really not all that high. And I want to run a comparison to see if that 30% extra accuracy really matters or not. So what I'm going to do is first activate the buff. It's an on hit. You see I have it in my buff bar. I'm going to be staying exactly on this point. One on the left. So that is the spread with the buff. And then we're going to do one on the right without a buff. Let's compare. Yep, it seems a little better, but not miles better. So you do have this option if you simply cannot stand the spread, and I thought I should point that one out. In any case, let's switch to my Riven setup. Of course, I have a Riven. Actually, I have two for this one. I've been trying my hardest to get a specific Riven, but unfortunately, I was not able to, and we're going to be using this one. Magna Satyata, multi-shot damage, minus fire rate, which to be honest I don't really mind, and a lot of impact, but like I said, impact is a goddamn plague, however I cannot seem to shake it. Now with a Riven such as this, our kill uh, potential will go a bit up by about 20%, so we're gonna go down a shot. Other than that, nothing really changed from the build. I swapped in the uh, Riven instead of Lethal Torrent, simply because I still want my Corrosive to be higher than the Blast, at least. There's no way I can compete with the Impact procs, but at least I can have it higher than the Blast. And let's test it out like this and see what kind of results we're going to be getting. I don't think I need to respawn these guys, so we're just gonna go for it. Put them up into the air using Vauban's free ability. Nice and close. One, two, three, four. 
So I almost took out a target in free shots. So yes, Rivens do make things better. Free shots there. Currently a Bronco Rivens unrolled. I saw them go as low as 20 plat. So it's it can be worth going for an Ag Bronco Riven if you guys love this weapon. And by all means, I love it as well. I love the whole dual wielding teapot steampunk idea behind them. At least that's how I see them. Do I recommend the Ag Bronco? The Ag Bronco Prime? Well, yes, definitely for up close and personal. If you want to use this weapon on a beefy frame, let's talk about Rhino, Inaro, something that can take a lot of punishment while staying in the front lines, then by all means, absolutely go for the Ag Bronco Prime. It's definitely not the, well, strongest secondary weapon in the game, but it does pack one hell of a punch. Now, I promised you guys we would talk about Rivens and um, what kind of Riven would you need to make this into a Tigris Prime wannabe. Well, first and foremost, you gotta get rid of that stupid impact. So, ideally, the negative would be impact. Getting rid of the impact makes way for Slash to proc. So, an ideal Riven for a Slash build would have minus impact, plus slash, damage, multi-shot. Do not go for crit chance, crit damage on the Ag Bronco Prime. I'm sorry, but the base uh, crit chance is simply not enough. Other than that, of course, multi-shot and damage when it comes to Ag Bronco Rivens in general is never a bad idea. In any case, we're gonna be picking up uh, Lady Mirage Prime so we can max everything out. Let's see, what kind of buffs do you have? Deadeye, no, Deadeye will not do in this case. What we wanna use is Pistol Amp. 27% extra damage to pistols and yes, even though the Ag Broncos are shotguns, uh, when it comes to secondary modding, pistol mods will apply. If you know you're going up against Grenier, Corrosive Projection will always be a better idea, but Pistol Amp will offer its benefit regardless of the target. Other than that, let's swap in some Arcanes because these are a lot more important than the Aura. Arcane Precision, now this one is farmable from the third Eidolon down on Cetus. On headshot, 80% chance for plus 120 damage to pistols for 8 seconds. And the second Arcane, you have a bit of an option. Now you can use Arcane Velocity on critical hit, which we basically don't do much. 60% chance for 80% fire rate to pistols for 6 seconds. I do not recommend this one. We don't do a lot of critical hits. The fire rate is basically gonna bite us in the butt, especially if you don't reduce the recoil with a Riven, or perhaps with Stabilizers, you can also use that one as well. In any case, I do not recommend arcane velocity what i recommend is arcane awakening on reload 40 percent chance for plus 100 percent damage to pistols for 16 seconds and the usual plus one arcane revive now this is amazing but unfortunately it's a bit lackluster because it's not very trustworthy you're not gonna get a lot of uptime out of this one because again it's an on reload 40 percent chance Activate Mirage's third ability for 514% extra damage and of course the clones as well. But now I'm gonna be getting a lot of damn blast procs. There we go, an impact procs. One, two, three. Let's open up and go like max fire rate. But as you saw, my Riven does have negative fire rate. Not that I mind without taking care of the recoil as well. It's not able to one-shot a target. That was 70%. Are you fresh? Yes, you so fresh. Not anymore though. As you can see, it works into armor strip because that's the idea behind the build. So it will still take two to three shots to take care of one of these high level targets. Now it's very interesting dual wielding teapots and I love the whole animation when the little thing in the front spins around even though you don't get to see it that much. Anyway, the Act Bronco Prime has a lot of usability issues. Reload is long. Clip size, mm, not all that great, and the spread is absolutely horrendous, but there's no denying it can sure pack a punch. And that's gonna do it for this build guide. I'm gonna thank you guys so much for watching, like, favorite, share, and subscribe if you enjoyed the content. If you have any feedback for me or would like to request a specific weapon build, then by all means leave it in the comment section down below. I give you my word, I will read each and every comment. But until next time guys, bye bye